Welcome to Devos Toolkit, the channel where we create backups that are never restored. Do you think that your Kubernetes clusters are safe, enabled to withstand anything and everything? Hmm? Truth be told, Kubernetes is indeed very, very resilient. It was designed to be highly available and fault tolerant. You hopefully know all that already. And if you do, you probably also know that nothing is 100% resilient. Bad things happen. Unexpected things happen. And we should be prepared for anything and everything. Backups are a part of that preparation. We are, or at least we should be, creating them regularly in hope that we will never have to restore any of them. Yet, we might be in a situation when restoring a backup is our last option, especially in cases when a cluster is completely gone, kaput, and the only option left is to create a new one and restore a backup which hopefully should result in the new cluster running the same resources, having the same data, showing the same logs, and everything else that we had in the old cluster that is now gone. There are many, many ways we can create and restore backups, many of them being commercial. We will not explore any of them today. Instead, we'll focus on the arguably the best solution among open source projects. We'll go through Valero, which can be considered uh, the golden standard, at least among free options. So, today we will explore the glorious side of backups in general, and Valero in particular, while the next video will focus on the dark side of the same story. So, think of this video as an intro that's supposed to make you feel happy, and it is. I want you to feel safe before I make you paranoid and shatter all your hopes and dreams. All in all, this video is a happy one and you have the right to ignore the next one if you're prone to depression. So, on that note, let's jump right into it. I have a Kubernetes cluster that, among other things, is running an application in the A-Team namespace. The important note here is that it has uh, typical Kubernetes resources like pods, services, what's not, but also a persistent volume which is external storage attached to the pods of the application. That is effectively a stateful application that reads and writes data to disk. As such, we might need to ensure that at least two types of resources are backed up. We should have a backup of Kubernetes objects like deployments, pods, secrets, and so on and so forth, but also backups, or to be more precise, snapshots of data in persistent volumes. Otherwise, we might get a volume restored as a Kubernetes object, but no data in it. Some might also want to backup logs and other types of data, but that's just silly. You should be shipping logs to a store like Loki, so if there is anything to backup, that would be logs storage, not logs in Kubernetes objects. Anyways, we have, among other things, an application that consists of Kubernetes objects and data in external storage, and we can prove that by sending a request to the app to retrieve all the videos, all the data. Now, that is a very uneventful output. Still, remember that there are two entries in that JSON and uh, that it comes not from the application directly, but from external storage the application uses instead of a database. If it would have been database, it would still have external storage attached so the logic would be the same. We would need to backup that storage, except that backing up database data with Kubernetes backup tools might be a bad idea, probably. Still, okay, I promise this video is all about sunshines and rainbows, so I will keep the conversation uh, like that one for the next video. For now, imagine that any data is just data stored on some disk and that we should back it up. Now, there are two important ways we can create backups. They can be scheduled or on demand. You're likely to use both anyways. Almost all operations with Valero can be done through its CLI or by applying Kubernetes resources in the same way we would create any other. In case of the CLI, all we have to do is execute Valero, schedule, create, specify the name and choose the schedule with a value that follows the general job scheduling format. For now, we'll choose to create daily backups. Now, while executing commands to create Kubernetes resources is fairly common, I also believe it's not the way to go. A better approach is to always, always define resources as YAML files, either directly or through templating like Helm. 
That way we can store it in Git, review it, apply GitOps, and do all the other good things we normally do. And here's an example. This is a slightly more complicated schedule definition than the one we created through the CLI. It's scheduled to run every five minutes and to exclude namespaces default, kube node lease, kube public, and kube system. Excluding namespaces might be handy since there are always some that should not be restored. We should, for example, leave kube system be whatever it is in a cluster and not tamper with it in any form of way. Still, whether you choose to exclude namespaces or apply any other filter to backups is not an important one, since, as we will see later, we can choose which parts of the backup to restore when the time comes. Hence, it's easiest to backup everything. It's easier to remove stuff we do not need than to end up in a situation that we do need something that is not backed up. The only potential downside of backing up everything is that it might occupy too much space in backup storage, which can result in higher cost. If that's not an issue, just back up everything. Okay, let's apply that manifest and wait for a few moments. We can see that we got two backup schedules. One that will be created daily and the other set to the frequency of five minutes. One of those two makes no sense. Yet we created it mostly so that we can see it in action quickly. We can, as you can probably guess, create on-demand backups as well, which are especially useful if you are clairvoyant and you can sense danger. Or if you are into astrology and you see that the stars are aligning in a position that will lead to an inevitable disaster. Or if you read tarot cards and those you pull out result in a nasty situation that might lead to a doomsday. Anyways, we can create on-demand backups prior to some important changes to the cluster or before your sixth sense tells you to do so. We do that by executing Valero backup create and now we can retrieve all the backups just to confirm everything is indeed working. Here's what's happening. We have the Valero backup controller that reacts every time a backup resource is created. Such resource or resources can be created by us or by the schedule, which essentially acts as a glorified cron job that creates backup resources for us. When a backup resource is created, the controller creates a snapshot of etcd, which is Kubernetes internal database. That's where the current state of all the resources in the cluster is stored. It also creates snapshots of all the data and volumes, of all the logs, and a few other things. All those snapshots are then uploaded to an external storage. In the case of AWS, that would be an S3 bucket. In case of Google Cloud, it would be Cloud Storage Bucket, and so on and so forth. Any of those can be the final destination of the backups. Speaking of storage, Valero supports almost anything one can imagine. There is AWS S3, Google Cloud Storage, Azure Blob Storage, which are storages from the big three. It also works with Alibaba, Cloud OSS, DigitalOcean Object Storage, and a few others. If none of the currently supported are what you are using, there are many others that are not supported directly, but are S3 compatible, including Minio that effectively makes almost anything S3 compatible. All in all, if your storage is not supported one way or another, you're probably using something exotic or more likely something so antiquated that no one but you cares about. Okay, going back to the subject, we can confirm that's what it's really happening by taking a look at the bucket of the provider we chose, which in my case is AWS S3, but in your case it can be something else. First of all, we can see that Valero indeed created a bucket. Inside it, we can see that the directory backups was created. That means that we could, at least in theory, share that storage with other processes. Inside backups, there is a subdirectory for each backup. If we enter inside pre-disaster, we can see individual files, one for each type of resources of data that were backed up. There are volume snapshot classes, there are contents and snapshots themselves, item operations, logs, and so on and so forth. Okay, now that we have backups, we can explore what we might need to do in the disaster scenario. Imagine that a disaster happened and our cluster is down. To make things more complicated, imagine that for one reason or another, we cannot bring it back up. Now, to be clear, that is a very, very unlikely scenario if that cluster was distributed across multiple zones, since that would mean that at least two zones 
or two data centers would need to be down or that we did something that messed it up completely. Still, <coughs> happens. The cluster is down, but we have a backup, right? It might not contain the most recent state, but whichever state the cluster was in at the time the last backup was made. Still, something is better than nothing. This is a post about backups with Valero, so the scope is limited to just that. As a result, I will not dive into reasons why in such a disaster scenario you might want to resort to other ways to restore the state, nor which other tools might be better suited for it. Also, I promise that I will be all rainbows and unicorns and diving into those potentially better alternatives could result in a negative spin on the story. So I will stay out of it in this video and reserve it for the doom and gloom video that is coming soon, probably next one. Fortunately, I already created a second cluster that should continue where the first one left. It can be accessed through the kubeconfig.2yaml, so please note that Whenever you see me using it, we are working with a new cluster. I already installed Valero and Traffic Ingress in that same cluster and nothing else. Or at least I don't think I installed anything else. Valero in that cluster is configured, and this is important, to use the same bucket as Valero in the other cluster that is now gone, kaput, no more. Now, let's confirm that the new cluster is indeed virgin by listing all the namespaces we can see that there isn't much in that cluster. More importantly, we can see that the application that is supposed to be running in the A-team namespace is not there. Since Valero in the new cluster is configured to use the same bucket as the one in the old, it should have discovered huh, the backups created in the old cluster. Let's see whether that's indeed the case. We can see that a few scheduled backups are there as well as pre-disaster we created ourselves. That's the one we are interested in. That's the backup we want to restore. So let's just do it by executing Valero against the new cluster DOT2 and telling it to restore from the pre-disaster backup. Further on, let's say that we are not interested in the whole cluster, but only in the resources that were running in the A-team namespace. So we'll tell it to only include that namespace. And that's it, or at least that's supposed to be it. If you would like to take a closer look at what was included in that restore, we can execute Valero, still pointing to the new cluster, and tell it that we want to work with restore, and more specifically, that we would like to describe it. We can see that it completed the process that resulted in a number of items restored. We can see that it included only the resources from the A-team namespace, and that it also excluded a bunch of resources, mostly those related to Valero itself. And we can confirm that's indeed what happened by taking another look at all the namespaces. There we go, there it is. As expected, the A-team namespace is now there and we can list all the core resources, plus ingresses and persistent volumes, just to be certain that everything is indeed the same in the new as in the old cluster. But we are not yet done. We confirmed that Kubernetes resources were restored, but that does not necessarily mean that the data that was in external volumes was restored as well. And we can confirm that as well by sending a request to the application running in the new cluster. When we started, while we were still using the old cluster, that request returned two entries that were read from the storage. If we get the same result, again, that should be the confirmation that data was restored as well. But before we do that, we'll run a quick hack to update the ingress in the new cluster. Since the application is not accessible through a real domain, but NIPIO, which needs the IP of the external load balancer, and that LB is different in the new cluster, we'll do a quick patch to update it. And if you're using real domains, you'll have to update DNS records instead. And you should be re using real domains anyways. Okay, now let's see what we'll get. And boom! That was the last confirmation we needed. Both the resources and the data in external volumes were restored. Everything is working in the new cluster as if nothing happened. The disaster was averted. Actually, that's not really true. There was a delay between the old cluster crashing and the new one being fully operational. So there was some downtime. Also, we restored the last backup, which likely does not contain the last state of the old cluster, but the state when the backup was created. So neither resources nor data are the same 
as they were in the cluster before it crashed. Also, we had a simple example when restoring resources worked, even though it would fail in more complex scenarios. And to make things worse, if we have used a database inside the cluster, data snapshot could have been corrupted. We can also start asking questions whether we need backups if we are using GitOps and... Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. This is it. I said that I will be all sunshine and unicorns in this video. I got carried away. My apologies. We'll explore all the bad things that might have happened by us simply restoring backups in the next video. So stay tuned. Maybe subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.